The Maguindano people are part of the wider Moro ethnic group, who constitute the sixth largest Filipino ethnic group. Their name means people of the plains. History Pre-colonial in the early 15th century, Sharif Muhammad Kabungsuan, an Arab Malay preacher from the Royal House of Malacca, arrived in what is now Malabang, introduced Islamic faith and customs, settled down with a local princess, and founded a sultanate whose capital was Cotabato. The other center of power in the area, Sultanate of Buayan, which is now modern General Santos City, has an even longer history dating back to early Arab missionaries, who, although not able to implant the Islamic faith, introduced a more sophisticated political system. In Buayan, the transition to Islam took a longer time. Spanish Chronicles was told that Buayan, and not Cotabato, was the most important settlement in Mindanao at that time. Spanish era in 1579, an expedition sent by Governor Francisco de Sande failed to conquer the Maguindano. In 1596, the Spanish government gave Captain Esteban Rodriguez de Figueroa the sole right to colonize Mindanao. He met defeat in Buayan, and later, was killed in an ambush by a Bahayan named Ubal. His forces retreated to an anchorage near Zamboanga. The rise of the Maguindano Cotabato power came after the defeat of Datu Sirangan of Buayan in 1606. From 1607 to 1635, new military alliances were formed, this time with Cotabato. By the 1630s, Cotabato had become a coastal power. In the early 17th century, the largest alliance composed of the Maguindano, Maranao, Taosug, and other Muslim groups was formed by Sultan Kudarat or Kachal Kuralat of Maguindano, whose domain extended from the Davao Gulf to Dapitan on the Zamboanga Peninsula. Several expeditions sent by the Spanish authorities suffered defeat. In 1635, Captain Juan de Chaves occupied Zamboanga and erected a fort. This led to the defeat of Kudarat's feared admiral, Datu Tagal, who had raided pueblos in the Visayas. In 1637, Governor General Hurtado de Corcora personally led an expedition against Kudarat, and triumphed over his forces at Lamitan and Ilion. Spanish presence was withdrawn in 1663, providing an opportunity for Kudarat to reconsolidate his forces. From 1663 to 1718, Maguindano influence extended as far as Zamboanga in the west, Cagayan de Oro in the north, Sarangani in the south, and Davao in the east. In 1719, the Spaniards re-established control with the building of the strategic Fort Pilar in Zamboanga, Miravite 1976-40, Angeles 1974-28, Darangan 1980-42-45. The 1730s saw the weakening of the Maguindano Sultanate, as it struggled with civil war and internal disunity. Spanish help was sought by the besieged Raja Muda, Crown Prince, further destroying the prestige of the Sultanate. Thus, Cotabato power became increasingly dependent on Spanish support. This deepening compromise with Spain led Cotabato to its downfall. Fearing Buayan's re-emerging power, Sultan Kudarat II finally ceded Cotabato to Spain in return for an annual pension of 1,000 pesos for him, and 800 pesos for his son. Buayan, under Datu Uto, had, by the 1860s, become the power of Maguindano. In 1887, General Emilio Torrero led an expedition against Uto, although, he was able to destroy the Cota forts in Cotabato, he was unable to enforce Spanish sovereignty, Miravite 1976-42, Ilato 1971-16-29. In 1891, Governor General Valeriano Weiler personally led a campaign against the Maguindano and Maranao. In the next few months, Weiler erected a fort in Parang Parang, between Palangi and the Alanan coast. This effectively stopped the shipment of arms to Uto, who died a defeated man in 1902. American era during the Philippine-American War, the Americans adopted a policy of non-interference in the Muslim areas, as spelled out in the Bates Agreement of 1899 signed by Brig. General John C. Bates and Sultan Jamal Kiram II of Jolo. The agreement was a mutual non-aggression pact which obligated the Americans to recognize the authority of the Sultan and other chiefs who, in turn, agreed to fight piracy and crimes against Christians. 
However, the Muslims did not know that the Treaty of Paris, which had ceded the Philippine archipelago to the Americans, included their land as well. After the Philippine-American War, the Americans established direct rule over the newly formed Moro Province, which then consisted of five districts Zamboanga, Lanao, Cotabato, Davao, and Sulu. Political, social, and economic changes were introduced. These included the creation of provincial and district institutions, the introduction of the public school system and American-inspired judicial system, the imposition of the settler, the migration of Christians to Muslim lands encouraged by the colonial government, and the abolition of slavery. Datu Ali of Kudarangan, Cotabato refused to comply with the anti-slavery legislation, and revolted against the Americans. In October 1905, he and his men were killed. The Department of Mindanao and Sulu replaced the Moro Province on 15 December 1913. A policy of attraction was introduced, ushering in reforms to encourage Muslim integration into Philippine society. In 1916, after the passage of the Jones Law, which transferred legislative power to a Philippine Senate and House of Representatives, polygamy was made illegal. However, the Muslims were granted time to comply with the new restrictions. Proxy colonialism was legalized by the Public Land Act of 1919, invalidating Muslim pusaka inherited property laws. The act also granted the state the right to confer land ownership. It was thought that the Muslims would learn from the more advanced Christian Filipinos, and would integrate more easily into mainstream Philippine society. In February 1920, the Philippine Senate and House of Representatives passed Act No. 2878, which abolished the Department of Mindanao and Sulu and transferred its responsibilities to the Bureau of Non-Christian Tribes under the Department of the Interior. Muslim dissatisfaction grew as power shifted to the Christianized Filipinos. It was one thing to be administered by the militarily superior Americans, another by their traditional enemies, the Christian Filipinos. Petitions were sent by Muslim leaders in 1921 and 1924 requesting that Mindanao and Sulu be administered directly by the United States. These petitions were not granted. Isolated cases of armed resistance were quickly crushed. In Cotabato, Datu Ambong of Kitapawan attempted to incite a jihad holy war against the Americans and the Christian Filipinos. This, however, did not take place when the governor of the province mobilized government forces. Realizing the futility of armed resistance, some Muslims sought to make the best of the situation. In 1934, Arolas Tulawi of Sulu, Datu Manangdang Pang and Datu Bla Sinchuit of Cotabato, and Sultan Alauya Alanto of Lanao were elected to the 1935 Constitutional Convention. In 1935, only two Muslims were elected into the National Assembly. The Commonwealth years sought to end the privileges the Muslims had been enjoying under the earlier American administration. Muslim exemptions from some national laws, as expressed in the Administrative Code for Mindanao, and the Muslim right to use their traditional Islamic courts, as expressed in the Moro Board, were ended. The Bureau of Non-Christian Tribes was replaced by the Office of the Commissioner for Mindanao and Sulu, whose main objective was to tap the full economic potentials of Mindanao not for the Muslims but for the Commonwealth. These development efforts resulted in discontent which found expression in the various armed uprisings, mostly in Lanao, from 1936 to 1941. The Muslims are generally adverse to anything that threatens Islam and their way of life. Che Man believes that they were neither anti-American nor anti-Filipino, but simply against any form of foreign encroachment into their traditional way of life. During World War II, the Muslims in general supported the fight against the Japanese, who were less tolerant and harsher to them than the American Commonwealth government. Independent Philippines After independence, efforts to integrate the Muslims into the new political order met with stiff resistance. It was unlikely that the Muslims, who have had longer cultural history as Muslims than the Christian Filipinos as Christian, would surrender their identity. The conflict was exacerbated in 1965 with the Ubida Massacre, in which Muslim soldiers were allegedly eliminated because they refused to invade Sabah. This incident contributed to the rise of various separatist movements. 
the Muslim Independence Movement MIM, Ansar el Islam, and Union of Islamic Forces and Organizations. In 1969, the Moro National Liberation Front MNLF, was founded on the concept of a Bangsa Moro Republic by a group of educated young Muslims. The leader of this group, Nur Miswari, regarded the earlier movements as feudal and oppressive, and employed a Marxist framework to analyze the Muslim condition and the general Philippine situation. In 1976, negotiations between the Philippine government and the MNLF in Tripoli resulted in the Tripoli Agreement, which provided for an autonomous region in Mindanao. Negotiations resumed in 1977, and the following points were agreed upon, the proclamation of a presidential decree creating autonomy in 13 provinces, the creation of a provisional government, and the holding of a referendum in the autonomous areas to determine the administration of the government. Nur Miswari was invited to chair the provisional government, but he refused. The referendum was boycotted by the Muslims themselves. The talks collapsed, and fighting continued. Che Man 1988-146-147 When Corazon C. Aquino became president, a new constitution, which provided for the creation of autonomous regions in Mindanao and the Cordilleras, was ratified. On 1 August 1989, Republic Act 673 or the Organic Act for Mindanao created the Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao ARMM, which encompasses Maguindano, Lanao del Sur, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. Musical heritage the native Maguindanone have a culture that revolves around Kulintang music, a specific type of gong music found among both Muslim and non-Muslim groups of the southern Philippines. Languages They speak Maguindanone and second languages Cebuano, Tagalog and Arabic and or English. Because of the mass influx of Cebuano migrants to Mindanao, many of the Maguindano people tend to be exposed to the Cebuano language from Visayas easily enough to be able to speak it. Arabic, a central Semitic language, is also spoken by a minority of the Moro people, being the liturgical language of Islam. Most Maranaos, however, do not know Arabic beyond its religious uses. Chavacano, sometimes spelled as Chavacano or Chavacano, is a Philippine Spanish Creole, that gained popularity as a Philippine major language during the short-lived Republic of Zamboanga. Most of the Maguindano people with part Tausug or Yakin from Zamboanga and Basilan have also attained the ability to speak this language, specifically the Zamboanga dialect known as Zamboangueño. Literary arts the literary elements of the Maguindano include folk speech and folk narratives. The folk speech is expressed in the Antuka, Pantuka, Paakainala, riddles, and Bayak, lyric poems, while the narratives may be divided into the Islamic and folk traditions. The Islamic includes the Quran, the Tarsila or genealogical narratives, the Luwaran, an embodiment of customary laws, hadith or sayings of the Prophet, the Quazal or religious stories. The folk tradition comprises the Tootle, folk tales, and the epics Raja Indarapatra, Darangan, and Raja Madaya. For the Maguindano, riddles promote friendship in a group. They are also tools for basic pedagogy. The structure of a Maguindano riddle consists of an image and a subject. There are four types of image, comparative, descriptive, puns or puzzles, and narrative. The Maguindano believe in a basic unity underlying the various aspects of the environment and this belief is reflected in the use of often conflicting image and subject in the riddles Notre Dame Journal 1980-17. Riddling involves a group of people, one of which is the riddler. If one volunteers to be a riddler, he, she has to have a riddle ready or else be subject to detapalung, ridicule, which is given not as a criticism but as part of the riddling tradition. The Maguindano consider bad riddlers as those who add to or subtract from the original text of the riddler. Riddling can take place anytime and anywhere as long as there is some form of group activity in progress, it can be done during work or recreation or both. Ambiguities of answers can be settled by an old man or somebody who is respected in the barangay, the basic political unit. In this sense, riddles allow a certain flexibility in their solutions, that is, they point to various logically possible solutions, thus providing some form of basic pedagogy. An example of this would be Entudan, Nyadan. 
It is here, it is there. Wind. There are, however, other possible answers, cradle, for example. Riddles also represent the world view of the Maguindano. For example, Cannibal in the forest That eats only a head. Hat Although cannibals and hats do not share anything in common, they are reconciled with the use of metaphors such as That eats only heads. Other beliefs involving riddling is that it should not be done at night, so as not to invite the participation of evil spirits. Another belief associated with riddling at night is the avoidance of the word nipai, snake. If the use of the word cannot be avoided, euphemisms are resorted to, e.g. Big Worm. Notre Dame Journal 1980-20-25. Maguindano verses are expressed through such forms as the Ida Ida Arata, children rhyme sung in chorus, or through the Tubid Tubid, short love poem. For instance, Pupalayog sa papas ka pumagapas apas, ka tulakan kan ko banog, na daran pukatalakan, ka dayan kasakriti. Kanogan si Kanogan Nakanogan ni Laden ko Upakorasai Mamikira Ana Palandong Adar Na di Akun Mapkanga da Bologang ko sa Gugo Ka Oman Akun Ipantao na Pusalakana ig O Matau Kandalia Flying hard, the swift is trying to catch up with the hawk but he cannot equal him because he is far too small. Woe, woe unto me. Worried from thinking of a loved one. And I cannot let my feelings prevail, express my love. Because every time I want to reveal it, stops it in its way. Composed in metaphorical language, the bayak is resorted to when a cautious and euphemistic expression is required. An example, Ween 1983-35-36 Salankanai Ameling Amaladubi Pajamanan Ka Malan Sa Divinal Dun Dun I Lumaging Apaya Pagalimuan Ka mumbas sa hakadulit. Na yu sakana dumanding. Sa kaludan pun na is. Na matagaku, ngka maneg. Diku mawatang galing. Talking salankanai. Tease hard to trust in you. For untrue leaves could sprout. Dun dun fond of chatting. Tease hard believing you for cheating buds may show. Once I start to fondle from the sea, you would just hear from me. My darling, close to me. Salsalas or tarsillas are family heirlooms that trace one's line of descent. They are used to ascertain noble lineages that may go back to the days of the Kabungsuan. For example, a Tarsila recounts the adventures of Datu Gimba who leads the first group of Maguindano to Labangan. According to the account, he marries the local princess by Alibabai and adopts the title Datu Sa Labangan. The next to arrive at Labangan is Datu Buyan Makasoza Kanapia, an adventurer, who marries a Maranao. Together, Datu Gimba and Kanapia rule Labangan. Other Datu arrive in time, namely, Datu Maulo Natap Kansi and Datu Kanao Sultan Maputi, Alfanta 1975-4-5. The Maguindano Luwaran is a set of encoded Adat laws that deal with murder, theft, and adultery, as well as with inheritance and trade. The laws apply to all regardless of class, and has since become the basis of modern Islamic jurisprudence, Darangan 1980-33. The hadith are the sayings and practices of the Prophet Muhammad, collected, compiled, and authenticated by Islamic scholars. Hadith constitute one of the sources for Islamic law and jurisprudence. They are also used to explain and clarify certain points in the Quran. The language used is Arabic. 
Religious quiza are stories written in Arabic, and are used by the Imam to teach Islam to children. An example is the Isra wal Miraj, which tells the story of why Muslims pray five times a day. The Prophet Muhammad is awakened one night by the angel Diaba Rail. The Prophet then rides on a burak and travels to Masjid Lagsa in Jerusalem, where he sees a bright light that leads to heaven. Each layer of heaven has a different color. On the seventh layer, he hears the voice of God, and sees heaven and hell. On the way down, he is instructed by Moses to ask God that the number of prayers be reduced from 50 to 5 times daily. His request is granted. Magindano Tutal folk tales are short stories involving simple events. Two examples are presented. The Lagia Kudarat tells the adventures of the two children of Lagia, Raja Mampalai of Lum who are blown away after Mampalai laments the lack of viable partners for his children. These two children are Lagia Kudarat and Pateli Princess Siti Kumala. Pateli Kumala is blown to a forest where she meets a Kabayan. In all Maguindano stories, this character is associated with an old unmarried woman. The Kabayan adopts her, as she earlier did the prince named Sumedsan Sa Alungan. Although Kumala and Sumedsan live in the same house, they never speak to each other. Later, because of peeping toms, Kumala leaves and Sumedsan goes with her. They find their way to Lump, where a happy reunion takes place. Sumedson eventually marries Kumala. Meanwhile, Lagia Kudarat is blown to Kabalawanan. There he meets another Kabayan who allows him to live with her. One day while hunting, Kudarat hears the game of SIPA, rattan ball kicked with the ankle, being played. He proceeds to the direction of the game and is invited to play. Not knowing how to play, he accidentally causes the SIPA to fall in front of the princess who is sitting beside the window. She throws him her ring and handkerchief. The marriage between the princess and Kudarat is then arranged. After the wedding, Kudarat feels homesick, his wife then suggests that they go back to Lum. There is a happy reunion. A week later, Kudarat and his wife returns to Kabalawanan to live with his in-laws, Notre Dame Journal 1980-3-6. Pat I. Mata narrates the story of two brothers, Pat I. Mata and Datu Sa Pulu. The former rules Kabalukan while the latter reigns over Reina Regente. Pat I. Mata is so called because he has four eyes, when his two eyes sleep, his other two are awake. He is also known for his cruelty to women, marrying them when they are beautiful and returning them after they have gone ugly. Because of this, the people of Kabalukan can no longer tolerate Pat I. Mata's cruelty. They approach his brother and ask for his help. The Datu Sa Pulu tries to advise his brother but to no avail. He then decides to kill Pat I Mata. So he builds a cage. Seeing the cage, Pat I Mata asks what it is for. The Datu replies that it is constructed to protect them from an incoming storm. Being greedy, Pat I Mata asks for the cage saying that the Datu can make his own anytime. The Datu pretends to hesitate but later accommodates his brother wishes. When Pat I Mata and his followers enter the cage, the Datu orders the door shut. Realizing that he is tricked, he says before being thrown into the river, Never mind, my brother. We would always be enemies, and we will never be reconciled till eternity. I would die but I pray that whenever you go riding on a boat in the river, my spirit will capsize it. Notre Dame Journal 1980-7-8 Maguindano epics are chanted and antedate Islam, the elements of which were later incorporated. The epic Raja Indarapatra deals with various characters, many of whom are imbued with supernatural powers. One portion of the epic tells the story of how two brothers, Raja Indarapatra and Raja Sulayman, save Mindanao from terrible creatures Gagalonia 1967-288. Another portion deals with the birth of Raja Indarapatra, who is said to come from the union of Sultan Nabi and his cousin. The plot revolves around a trick the cousin, who is well versed in black magic, plays on the Sultan. Raja Madaya is believed to be an original Magindana work since many of its elements language, metaphor, objects in the tale are Magindano. On the other hand, other elements in the epic point to foreign origins, Ween 1984-12-13.
The epic involves various narratives one of which tells about the childless Sultan Ditindagan, in his despair, he prays for a child, promising to give it to a dragon. His wish is granted, but in time, a dragon appears to claim the now-grown princess Intan Tihaya. Hearing about Intan's plight, Raja Madaya comes to the rescue, Ween 1984-14. Notable Maguindano Tukau Mastura, is an influential Filipino politician. Murad Ibrahim, is the current chairman of the Southern Philippines Islamist Group, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. He is one of the key persons in the Bangsamoro peace process in the Philippines. Salapata Pendadan, was a Filipino lawyer, military officer, and a statesman, being the first Filipino Muslim in history to hold these offices. One, he died on May 16, 1985 in Quezon City. Muse Sima, is a Filipino politician who has been the current vice mayor of Cotabato City since June 2010. Pax Mangudadatu, governor of Sultan Kudarat. Sharifa Akil, Miss Asia Pacific International 2018 References <references>